Welcome back. It was one of the largest earthquakes ever recorded, and yet Chile's buildings withstood the tremors remarkably well. Hundreds of people lost their lives rather than the thousands one might expect. But the coastal towns and villages were ill-prepared for the devastating tsunamis which followed. The epicentre of the quake was south of the capital, Santiago, but 600 miles off the coast, the islands of Juan Fernandez were especially badly hit. A group of scientists have travelled to the archipelago, analysing the wreckage in search of ways to help Chile better withstand a future earthquake. Here's our science correspondent, Julian Rush. So remote and isolated are the volcanic islands of Juan Fernandez that when the Scottish sailor Alexander Selkirk jumped ship here in 1704, he was alone for four years. His story of survival is said to be the inspiration for Robinson Crusoe. Ha! That feels good. <laughs> the scientists are here to collect evidence before it disappears. Initial reports had suggested the islands had been hit by a mega tsunami after the earthquake, an incredible surge of water 40 metres high. The epicentre of the fifth largest quake since measurement began lay between the islands and the coast of Chile. What we're finding is debris on top of the tree, and that really gives us some idea of where, how high the water surface was, how big the tide was that came in with the, with the tsunami, the tsunami tide, because the only way that you could find a, tree, a chair up on a tree is if it was swept by the tsunami and deposited there. Okay, 5.9. Measuring and mapping the height of the debris in the trees reveals the surge here wasn't 40 metres after all. The 10 metres above sea level, so the, the wave was about 10 metres high as it washed ashore. But it was still very high, comparable with the devastating Boxing Day tsunami of 2004 that hit Sri Lanka the water powering up the steep slope of the island. This is 2.2 metres, it's higher than I am. So the tsunami went way up from here. It's unbelievable. I mean, 150 metres off the beach, and still we are at 2.2 metres depth. Amazingly, just 13 people died. A young girl, the heroine whose quick thinking saved her people. It's a pretty steep slope, so if you run to high ground, you have a pretty good chance to make it. So the, um, that's, that's what saved the, saved the people here. And then, of course, uh, the daughter of one of the carabineros, of one of the uh, police uh, uh, officers, 12-year-old uh, daughter, 13-year-old daughter, uh, she rang the uh, church bell, and that uh, triggered the evacuation at the very last minute. This is it, you see. You strike the gong with it. The gong is used to warn of fires, landslides, and tsunamis. This was the living room, uh, the toilet and the living room, my parents' room and my room. It was a big wave. It was like a black mass with sticks and refrigerators and rooftops and television aerials. There is a lot to learn. Tsunamis are fickle. The damage they cause notoriously unpredictable, depending on local geography taking even a country like Chile well prepared for earthquakes unawares. Tsunamis has been called many times the underrated hazard and partly because tsunamis uh, do not strike as frequently as earthquakes. But what we saw in Chile is that more people died in the tsunami than they did uh, from the earthquake damage. On the mainland, it was Concepcion that felt the full combined force of tsunami and earthquake the spasm in the crustal plates shifting the city a full three metres to the west. Its aftermath, though, is offering scientists a unique opportunity to study the Earth's crust. The data from over 150 seismic field stations recording the thousands of aftershocks that will follow in the next two years, a chance to peer deep into the subduction zone where one tectonic plate slides beneath its neighbour. This whole network allows to locate, to obtain an accurate location of all these events. And um, these accurate locations, they are needed to resolve the structure. So to see, for example, if there's crustal falls, because these crustal falls will have smaller earthquakes as well. Last week, Chileans marked a month since the quake struck. 
All around the world, other countries have coastlines like Chile, where offshore earthquakes could wreak the havoc that's still visible one month on. Like Chile, they could be caught unawares by the power of a quake-driven tsunami. What the scientists learn here can't stop it happening or yet predict it, but they may be able to help prevent so much damage next time. Now, on Tuesday, we expect Gordon Brown to announce that the election will be on May the 6th, but there are big doubts over how many people will bother to vote. One survey suggests more than half of eligible voters under the age of 25 aren't even registered.